higher. There is no place for police brutality on the African continent. No brutality by armed forces on our African continent. Having said that, I want to wage a little on the issue that is taking place currently in Nigeria. It would seem that there is a, a unit called Special Anti-Robbery Unit that was operating in that country. And obviously the context is that an anti-robbery unit ordinarily would be faced with very uh, dangerous, will be going after very dangerous criminals, very violent criminals, uh, uh, certainly, who pose not only a threat, serious threat, against the members of the police, but also the members of the public. That is the context I want you to have in mind. But the allegations against the SARS unit is that they are very, very brutal. And as a result, many people have lost their lives at the hands of the, of the, of the, of the SARS unit. Now, in light of this, it would seem that the members of the public went out on, on, on protest, went out to protest, to show obviously their dissatisfaction against the conduct of the SARS unit and calling on the government in that country to shut down the, the, the SARS unit. Uh, we've seen the, hash, hash, has, the hashtags, hashtag shut down SARS. But I want to come from a different perspective. I want to come from a very different perspective and I don't want to be engaged in the politics around the issue. I just want to look at the at, at, at it from a legal perspective a little bit so that we understand at least without taking sides what are important considerations when one deals with issues of alleged brutality by the police, whether in Nigeria or any other country on the African continent. As a rule of thumb, the use of force in a country, one must never be measured in terms of the results, but it must be measured in terms of the compliance to the legal framework. So it must never just be seen from the context of a certain number of people that have died, because there is a report in this instance from the government indicating that 20 to 25 were wounded, one has died, but Amnesty International, on the other hand, indicates that 12 have died as a result of military action in that country. So, what is important? The measure should not be the result. Measure should be in the conduct of police or military operations, whether the legal framework was complied. And if there is dissatisfaction with regards to the results, then we must go and check the legal framework and when I mean the legal framework, we look at the constitution of that country, we look at the domestic laws applicable to the use of force in that country, but importantly, we look at uh, international principles regulating the use of force. In this particular instance, it is a, within the context of, uh, of, of peace and we're dealing with human rights principles relating to the use of force. So those are important considerations that we must consider. And it's important to note that each case must be judged on its own merits. We cannot look at all these incidents as if they are single incidents. And in every eventuality, we need to then make an assessment. What are the facts? What actually, in each of the incidents against the SARS unit, how many people have died? Where did they die? How did they die? We must look at the facts. We must look at each situation based on the threat that was posed to the law enforcement officers and the threat that was posed against the public as a result of actions of criminals. But also it's important to look at the intelligence that the police had at their disposal when they were conducting that particular that those particular raids against these uh, robbers. But also, you must, we must also understand as members of the public that as much as it's easy to cry foul against the conduct of the police, you must understand also that when the police 
are responding to these allegations. They themselves are threatened. Their lives are in danger. The lives of the public is in danger. But also there is this thing. Currently we do not have information around each of these incidents. And it's very difficult to then make a comment on whether or not SARS unit complied with the legal framework or did not. But what I want to say and emphasize is that each incident must be judged according its own merits and according to the standard that is imposed by law. We look at the constitution, we look at the domestic law, we look at how domestic courts are, are, are interpreting issues around the use of force. But also importantly, we look at the international legal framework. But there are importantly four principles that are important when it comes to the use of force in a domestic setting. One, the principle of necessity. Was it necessary for the SARS unit to use force in each of the incidents? Was, for example, force must be proportional. This is judged on the basis of the threat that they face the threat that members of the public face, but also importantly, the, 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 the offense, the nature of the offense. And in this case, we are dealing with armed robbery. But also, one of the important principles is the principle of precaution when we are dealing with, with, with the issue of the use of force. And then the last principle, which is important, after you have exercised precaution to minimize the level of risks that can be imposed by the police. Then lastly, then, is the concept of minimum force. So, what about the military? Are the same principles applicable when they act in a domestic setting? The answer is a simple, emphatic yes. The military equally must work in accordance with the, the four principles that I have mentioned earlier. Now, looking at the involvement of the military forces in Nigeria on the ground, the question is simple. Who authorized them to be on the ground? And is that deployment within the confines of the law? If it is, what were their orders? What operations were they needing to conduct? What was the intelligence that they had at their disposal? But importantly, whatever operation they were conducting, they must still comply with the four principles of necessity, proportionality, precaution, and the use of minimum force. Lastly, what is then the way forward in this instance? In this instance, one, in my view, we must not try to, to be political about the situation, right? We must look at the situation, in my view, it's a legal issue that we need to look at. The president, for example, can have an inquiry to look into each of the, or in, if there can be investigations, to look in each and every incident where there was allegations against, against the the, the rogue unit and whether or not force was applied correctly following what is the constitution what is the domestic law what are the courts saying and obviously international law that is what for me is important look at each case with its own merits criminal cases can be opened and the courts can then make a determination whether the use of force was lawful or not and that is important if people really then uh, can also uh, they can there can be civil claims against the government that is another route that they can do but lastly and more importantly africans despite the fact that we need to be uh, very 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 hold our, our governments accountable it's important that we we be very careful as well because of the environment in which for in my view the sars unit was working in and the danger that they were facing remember they are dealing with very dangerous criminals who are armed. You understand whether they have bombs, whether they have weapons, but remember it is very serious allegations. And the, the levels of uh, uh, threat faced by the ordinary people. Lastly, again, the police are human. The military are human. And in my view, would ordinarily comply with the prescripts of law when conducting the operations. And that is, in my view, what is important. So I just wanted to highlight these principles, and I really sympathize against those that have lost their lives. But if we follow these considerations, we'll be able to make our minds up, whether it was lawful or lawful what SARS did, 
or what the armed forces is alleged to have done was it lawful or unlawful you make up your mind it is not my business to make up your mind uh, on your behalf having said that ladies and gentlemen there are more saucy topics that i will engage in uh, within my, my my ability and i would implore you to keep looking at the channel and subscribe and ensure that you invite many 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 more people so that we can look at all the situations on the African continent and become part of the solution. Let us not fuel anger. Let us be rational. Let us be responsible citizens and ensure that we act in the best interest of our countries, in the best interest of the, the citizenry. I implore you. Thank you very much.